sometimes when I'm working on a Chrome extension, it's just for fun. Do you remember the internet back in the early 2000s? There were flashing buttons, blinking text, and marquees, GIFs, and so on. Okay, that's enough. In the spirit of those early days of the internet, today I want to show you how I built an extension that customizes my cursor on developer.chrome.com. If you follow along, you too can have a Chrome Dino takeover like this one. Let me show you how to easily build something like this in just a few minutes. To build an extension like this, you only need three files, so let's go through them one by one. First of all, every extension has a manifest file. This is a JSON file containing a basic description of your extension. In a new folder, create a file called manifest.json. We need to add a JSON object with a few keys. Name is used in various parts of Chrome's UI where your extension needs to be identified. Version is used to identify the particular release of your extension. And manifest version specifies what version of the extensions platform we're targeting. Manifest version 3 is the latest version of the platform. You can follow along as we go. I'll pause the video for you here in case you need a moment to create the manifest file on your end. OK, we're actually ready to test already. Head to chrome colon slash slash extensions in your browser and enable developer mode in the top right. Then click load unpacked and open the folder you've been working in. If we've done everything right, the extension will load. It doesn't do anything yet, but we have a basic extension. You can now go out into the world and call yourself an extension developer. But let's do a little bit more. Hopefully it goes without saying that our extension will need to contain the image for the cursor we'd like to use. I already have my dyno saved as cursor.png on my desktop, so I'll drag it into my extensions directory. I'll include a link to my dyno file in the description, or feel free to use your own. For best results, use an image that's 32 by 32 pixels or smaller. Mine is slightly bigger, but that's not a problem. You could go up to 128 by 128 pixels, but anything larger than that will be ignored by the browser entirely. OK, now let's update our extension so it adds our custom cursor to the page. We'll use CSS to replace the default cursor with the image we added. In a new style.css file, add a selector for the HTML element and set the cursor property like this. We're just passing a URL here using syntax you might be familiar with. However, we use some special replacement syntax where this string, it's a bit of a tongue twister, is replaced with the path to the file within our extension. I'm talking about underscore underscore msg underscore at at extension underscore id. This is part of the internationalization API, which you can learn more about in our documentation. Let's also add an offset of 32 pixels in both the vertical and the horizontal directions. This just tells the browser which part of the icon, in this case, the very center, to use when deciding what your mouse is hovering over. Oh, and the auto keyword. This tells the browser to fall back to the normal cursor if it can't load the custom one. If we don't specify this, the entire property will be ignored. Finally, we need to tell the extension to add this CSS to a web page. Back in our manifest.json file, set the content underscore scripts key to an array and add an object. We'll add a matches array and include developer.chrome.com forward slash star to tell it to add the CSS on any page matching this pattern. The asterisk is a wildcard, and it means we inject regardless of the path. We'll then set the CSS key to an array including style.css to tell it the files to inject. OK, we're almost ready to test, but there's one more thing we need to do. By default, Chrome doesn't expose assets from an extension to the web. Since your extension might contain files, you don't want an arbitrary website to be able to load. Add the web accessible resources key to your manifest file with contents like shown. We're adding a similar matches pattern to before and saying that we'd like to expose our cursor image to the site. All right, let's see if everything's working. Head back to chrome colon slash slash extensions and click the reload button. Navigate to developer.chrome.com and as you can see, the Chrome Dino icon now shows up as we move the mouse around. Now you might notice that if you hover over the link, your custom cursor disappears. This is because the default CSS added by your user agent 
Chrome, include some rules for A tags which take priority. To fix this, we can add a new rule for the A tag. I have another image which I'll also share in the description that we can use for this case. We'll reload one more time, refresh the page, and it seems to be working. In fact, if you were going to release this extension, there are a few similar edge cases that you'd want to handle. Those include adding another type of cursor, like the text cursor that shows if you hover over an input. You'd also want to make sure you decide if you'll add the exclamation mark important flag to your CSS to try and avoid sites that might override it. Let's explore adding one additional feature to the extension. I tried to pick something that would give us a chance to talk about some other capabilities and key concepts. We'll add an icon to the toolbar that shows a counter. Whenever you click on the page, we'll increase the counter by one, giving you a running total of how many times the dyno has helped you get around the site. To begin, let's update the content script in manifest.json with a JS array including a new file called counter.js. We can start by adding an event listener to the click event on the document. Use console.log to print a message. If you reload the extension and then reload the page, you should see that this works. Now, it would be nice to have a central place to coordinate keeping track of the count, even between tabs. For use cases like this, extensions let you register a service worker. This is just a script that can run outside of a specific tab and in the background. Let's register a service worker in our manifest. Add the background key and set it to an object containing the service underscore worker key with serviceworker.js as the value. Our content script can communicate directly with the service worker. To do this, we can update counter.js to call chrome.runtime.sendMessage. Let's send a page click message. To receive the message, let's create the script we previously referenced in the manifest for our service worker. Create serviceworker.js and use chrome.runtime.onMessage.addListener to register a listener. We can pass it a function to run as a callback. If the message is our page click message, call console.log so we can see this working. Reload your extension, and you should see a new service worker link on the Chrome extensions page. Click it to open and inspect your service worker. Then reload the tab open to developer.chrome.com. When you click, you should see a log in the service worker now. To learn more about service workers and why they're helpful, see our documentation. One key thing to note is that they are event driven meaning they will terminate when idle and then start up again when an event they are listening to is fired. Now for this behavior to work correctly, important event listeners should be added unconditionally and at the top level, i.e. not inside of another function. Okay, so we have our custom cursor and we're sending a message to our service worker whenever a user clicks on the page. As a reminder, the end goal was that on every click, we'd increment a counter in the toolbar. Let's wire up that final piece in two steps. First, creating the toolbar icon. Update your manifest file with the action key set to an empty object. If you reload your extension, you should now see an entry in the extensions menu when you click the puzzle piece that you can pin to the toolbar. Second, when our service worker receives the message our content script is sending, we need to update a counter associated with the toolbar icon. In your manifest, add the permissions key and set it to an array containing the string storage. This gives us access to an additional API for storing data. Now, some permissions will require additional user consent when the extension is installed, but storage is a fairly basic capability and that doesn't apply. Now in serviceworker.js, let's update the existing code we had to handle the content script message. First, let's make this listener async since the storage APIs are asynchronous. Use the chrome.storage.get API to get the current count. The value of zero here is the default that's used if there's no data in storage. Access the counter with let counter is data counter. Increment the counter with counter plus plus. And finally, save the value back to storage with chrome.storage.set. To update the UI, add a call to chrome.action.setBadge text with the text set to counter.toString. And that's it, our extension is complete. You can find all of the files in our Chrome extension samples repository if you ran into any trouble or just want to see the finished product. And our documentation has details on other APIs and capabilities that you can learn next. Do leave any questions in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you next time. 
Thank you.